Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. Thanks for coming to hang out with me for another Clash of Clans video. I realize I'm a couple days late on this recap, but I had to get it out there anyways because there are some amazing attacks that I want to show you guys. Also, a ton of variety in this. We're going to go two Town Hall 12s, two Town Hall 11s, and two Town Hall 10s, keeping it even. And guys, there's a ton of variety in the attackers and in the attacks used. It's going to be a fun video. Nerf this! If any of you guys are new to my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Guys, just so you know, on more details here, we did take the loss to Jezmec, all right? You're wondering why it's one, only 114 running uh, 40 bases? That's because we screwed up the breakdown a little bit. So you'll see we had to leave a 10 untouched, and they had to leave a Town Hall 11 untouched. But uh, if we'd got the breakdowns right, you would have expected to see 117 to 117 tie. They did win on percent, guys. Um, you know, and, and that's rough. Any loss is rough, definitely. But you got to consider, too, we had five of our Town Hall 12s out of this war five of our usual town hall 12s out of this war uh competing in the esl qualifier event so we were a little bit shorthanded for this and the fact that we managed to still come up with a tie and just lose on percentage to an undefeated clan not too shabby guys what are you gonna do hey it's clash you win some you lose some guys let's get into these attacks uh number three here we go by the way man i'm gonna be showing one of hex's town hall 12 triples hex 12 v 12 six packed again with the surprising attack strategy all right we'll see what hex used remember normally hex is a, is a queen charge minor guy pretty consistently but he's six pack 12 b 12 with a completely different strategy we're gonna check that out in a minute we've got lex coming in on his wise man account um using a pekka off to the left to get that funnel established guys look how many buildings there were out here he had to do some work to get that funnel established we had like four buildings deep the trash buildings over on this side but once you get rid of that stuff which he did we've got a bunch of dead space over here so you know that queen's not going to be walking around this way she can't reach the inferno so she's definitely not going that way wow he's an e-dragon to funnel on the other side up there holy moly so he found a great spot to get in there just getting that funnel established was the challenge holy moly queen's gonna come back around she could have gone either way because the e-dragon was taking his sweet time on that storage right there gonna be charging straight into a hound <clears throat> You know, charging a hound, not ideal, but you can do it. You know what I mean? It's a heck of a lot better than trying to do a wall wrecker entry into a hound. Because, you know, it's going to eat up some extra time, but your healers are going to keep your queen alive through it. Whereas, if you're doing a wall wrecker entry into a hound, your queen's still getting hammered on by those defenses while she's stuck on that hound. And usually, she's dead by the time that hound is dead. So, queen charge right into this base. God, look at this. Look at that. He did some amazing funneling on the outside to funnel in there. There were so many trash buildings out there. But once he got that funnel established and charged in, look at that value. First of all, he carved this base into a perfect little L shape left. He's getting the Eagle Artillery. He got two of the Inferno Towers. He got the Enemy Queen down. Um, you know, not that the Enemy Queen is necessary for Miners, but she can be distracting for Miners. They can come off of a Wizard Tower, you know, something like that, and, and go right into a bunch of defenses after that Queen. So if you get her down on a Miner Raid, it is helpful. Not necessary, but helpful. And man, he's just going to wreck this base. Um, goes ahead and pops that Ground Warden ability. Miners Grand Warden ability, oh, wears off right before that Giga Bomb goes off. Luckily, they're a little ways away from it. They don't get killed instantly, and they're able to heal back up. Wow. Uh, very, very nice attack from Lex on this one. Let's times four it through the rest of this because Queen is still up, busting through walls, took out two more defenses. Guys, this base was wrecked. That was an expert bit of funneling there on the beginning. So many trash buildings to get rid of to get in that entry, but he got it, and he got the value he needed to rush that base. Now let's go to one of these sexy hex triples. 12v12, six-packed again. What a clash, God. Oh, my gosh. And, guys, I was really surprised by the strategy that he used because, like I said, hex is a minor guy most of the time, but, you know, he'll use whatever works, and he's going to use Pekka Bobat on both of his 12v12 triples. Holy moly, you guys. What do you think about that, Vince? Vince hates Pekka Bobat. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't do change real well. Um, but look at this, guys. He's going to enter not as a queen walk 
into the Pekka Bow Bat, but he's gonna enter in one spot, put the healers right on the Pekkas. That's like an HGHB entry or an HPHB entry, um, where you just put the healers straight on the Giants or straight on the Pekkas. So that's another option, one I didn't even honestly really think about, but that totally is gonna work as long as you funnel the sides and have a good entry, get the healers on the Pekkas, heroes, bowlers, all that stuff behind. Look at this, guys. Look at this. He's only got five bat spells in his composition, so he's going to wait. He's going to hold off on those bat spells. He's going to be very patient. He wants to be sure he gets a ton of this splash damage down before he deploys his bat spells. He was real patient on that second rage there, too. So he had two rages, a jump, and uh, rest is going to be bats with two max freezes as well. Going to wait until he gets through and gets his town hall down or almost down before he deploys the bats. Guys, look at that. That's that that main push there still going strong. He's still got some Pekkas in there. He's still got a king in there. They're getting low on health. At this point, guys, the healers are down. He only brought four healers. Um, I think he had like six Pekkas on this, although we used like three of them for to establish the funnel in the beginning. Look at this, you guys. All the splash damage on this side of the base is already gone. And finally, he goes in and deploys those bats. Going to let them start working their way around. And the only splash damage he has left, guys, the only two, are touching each other. They're so easy to freeze at the exact same time. He's going to be able to pop his queen ability here in a few. Get that freeze right there. Oh, man. Four defenses frozen with that freeze. Beautiful freeze value. Gets the next freeze down there just like that. All the splash damage is gone. Wizard Tower's down. Inferno Tower's down. Bats are going to be able to clean up the rest. But you know what? He also saved some cleanup. I don't know if you guys caught my Town Hall 12 Peckable Bat video. But a lot of times you're going to end up with a ton of trash buildings on like one side of the base. A lot of the time. Not always, but a lot of the time. So saving a couple wizards for cleanup. Uh, really good idea on this tack because it can be tight on time. I'm not sure if this one was tight on time. It looks like he wrecked it pretty quick. But having a few wizards left for cleanup is going to help ensure that you're not getting that time fail. You're going to get that three star when it all goes well. Well, so beautiful hit from Hex. Let's get it down into Town Hall 11 attacks. Man, I don't know why my I, uh, iPad is so slow on switching back and forth, but uh, sometimes it is. Let's go 12. All right. Yeah, this is this is crazy, guys. It seems like bowlers are making a comeback. I don't know. I'm seeing more and more majority bowler attacks. Uh, kind of crazy. And I wanted to show this one because how old school is this strategy? Queen walk into a bowler witch. I mean, that used to be, that used to be a huge Town Hall 11 strategy. We barely ever see it anymore, but Muffin's gonna pull it up beautifully here. Um, look how he's gonna break this base down. Uh, got a bunch of dead space over here, so he's gonna use that, get an easy funnel established and make sure that his queen's walking to the left. Not really gonna have anything else over here to pull her over. Oh my gosh. So she's gonna should go bomb tower and then wrap under after that wizard tower because she's gonna be closer to the wizard tower than she is to that air defense. There we go. Beautiful. And now that she's this far away, she's not gonna try and wrap back around there. She's got plenty of stuff over here to bring her this way. Has some witches down right here. Looks like he just dropped those witches naked. Um and uh, you know what? And then gets a golem down right here to go ahead and tank that eagle artillery, make sure it's not landing on those witches. Holy moly. Not any real splash damage right at the entry. That's why those naked witches are able to get this side of the funnel established pretty well. Now he's got a wall wrecker coming into this side. Two jumps in this composition. Gonna see how far that wall wrecker gets him in, but you know what? He's probably gonna get that jump down right here. Open up all that stuff right there. There we go. Raging, healing his way through. Nice heal. Gotta keep those bowlers healed up if you want them to survive. You know, they're really strong offensively, but they're super weak. They don't have that much HP. Really, really prone to Eagle Blast, to Giant Bomb. So keep them healed up if you want them to survive. The last, look at this, the last jump goes down, opening up the rest of this base. From right here, those bowlers have access to all the rest of the defenses on this base, except for what's running around the outside. We got some Skellies tanking over here, and there's a couple loons sneaking in the side. Gonna grab that archer tower after they grab that archer tower then they get a free cannon oh man he wrecks this base with this super old strategy um and i thought it was interesting enough to put in the recap because we just don't see this tax strategy anymore let's times four through the rest he's got he's got all of his royals still up you know a bunch of bowlers got an ice golem still up holy moly muffin wrecked this base super hard with a super old strategy well done for the nostalgia factor there muff Let's go to 15. Now we got a straight up record Lalo by Mr. October. 
Guys, record law is another little, little strategy. We don't see that often at Town Hall 11. Usually you get a little more fancy than that. Uh, usually it ends up being a queen charge something or, you know, or maybe an electron, but straight up record law low, getting it done. The reason you don't see it a lot on fresh attacks is because a hound can really stop your record entry um your queen value from that record entry so you don't seem a lot fresh but hey if it's a mixed cc and you can get some good value from sending in that record and the heroes go ahead and do it mr october is going to crush this base with it right here there we go small cc already been pulled already poisoned gonna have to be frozen for a little bit looks like there's an ice golem in there luckily the queen misses that freeze spell and uh guys the ice golems just don't do that much defensively anymore they nerfed the freeze ability for them defensively a little bit um and they're just not as effective as they used to be which is why we're seeing more hound cc's now and not as many ice golem cc's before man almost every cc had an ice golem in it if not two um <clears throat> It was killing that kill squad value, uh, but now it looks like hounds are a little more effective at stopping that kill squad value than ice golems are. Look at all that value you got from the queen. Got a bunch of value. Notably did not get the eagle or the queen, but you know what? That's not a big deal, guys. If you get to that eagle early, um, and you can see that his pathing is going to bring him straight into that eagle artillery very early on in this raid, and he's going to be able to kill this queen with a skelly kill. Let's look for that rage come down right on top of that queen. Skelly spells a little early. Usually want to wait for that bomb tower and wizard tower to go down. But you know what? They get down pretty soon. The loons got them down. Now those skellies are in there untouched, killing that queen. Got a few uh, lava pups helping out that kill as well. She's already down. Already got the king down as well. Wow, very nice being able to do that with one skelly spell. A lot of times if the king is in there really close to the enemy queen, sometimes you need two skelly spells to get it done because that king distracts a lot of those skellies. Uh, wasn't a problem on this one. They targeted that queen first and got her wrecked. Nice hit by October. Very, very nice. Gonna wait for the cleanup there. And guys, that brings us into Town Hall 10. Gonna get into a hog attack finally. Queen Charge Hogs by Loon Raker, I do believe, on number 24. And then we're gonna end the video up with a beautiful, once again, it's become kind of an institution, but his Queen Charge Baby Dragon attacks are just so much fun. I gotta throw them in there. Um, let's go 24. Loon Raker with the Queen Charge Hogs. Figured I had to throw in the pigs at somewhere on this re recap. Um, going to be an interesting uh, start here. He's going to use this dead space over here and kind of some of this little bit of space between this wizard tower to get his queen to charge straight in there instead of just pulling along here or pulling further that way um so he's gonna have to establish that funnel a giant followed by a bowler bounce onto the cannon and a hog to help get that cannon down a little bit sooner not quite gonna get that established let's see what he does to get that gone or if he even needs to man Rages up the queen, gets some double value by raging the wall breakers in there as well to get that break. Finally puts a wizard on here just to make sure it's not going to draw her out and distract her. Second rage goes down on the queen because her first one was getting ready to wear off and she's taking a lot of heat right there. We got enemy king, two point defenses, enemy CC. Good thing it was under poison, otherwise that rage alone might not have been enough. Same rage takes out the enemy queen. Now we got both heroes down, you guys. Both heroes down. Um, just now pulling the last of the enemy cc looks like the wall breaker's got a partial pull but that's okay a poison is not really needed to deal with an ice golem um so not going to be a big deal there both heroes down guys and that is criteria for a good hog attack if you can get both those heroes down and create some some nice pathing then hogs might be a good choice for you using a stone slammer to go in and solo two defenses before those hogs even drop and he's got those new max level nine hogs coming out of that stone slammer remember it doesn't have to be loons inside there guys you can take those hogs too and with those level nine hogs that we have now that you can bring in your defense or inside of your clan castle that makes hog attacks even more powerful than they were before here we go. Queen is dead, but we're getting a healer swap onto those hogs, and that's so powerful. Anytime you're doing a queen charge hogs or queen charge miners, when your queen goes down and you've still got some healers left, you can still get some value out of them by getting that healer swap over to the hogs or over to the miners on hog attacks specifically. If you know that your queen's going to die, you can adjust your hog drop to make sure that you draw those healers over and get some more value from them because of that. Guys, look at that. 
This base is wrecked. Got plenty of hogs left. Has his clean down, clean up down way before the hogs are done. Um, and kind of, wow, saved a couple hogs for cleanup. I like that trick there. Remember, th they're a little less camp space than miners. Usually I save a miner for cleanup, but you know what? Hogs are a great choice too. If you can just hold on to one or two to go in and target these, these buildings right in here, boom, make sure that you're not gonna get a time fail. Very nicely done by Loon Raker. All right, let's go with our very last attack of this recap. Gonna be a Queen Charge Baby Dragon by Kiki. Fun stuff. I don't know how he just, it does not seem like he can fail with this attack because guys, I, I'm sure he probably has at some point, but I haven't seen it yet. And I've seen him do it a lot of times and I have not seen him fail with it yet. So crazy stuff. Let's, I'm gonna knock on wood. Um, otherwise I'm gonna get blamed for jinxing him next war. Um, but yeah, here we go. He's gonna wreck another base with this. And look at this. He's gonna take his stuff out right here to get his queen to go down that way. He's gonna wall break in right here jump over here which is gonna allow him access where he can reach this one this one and from right here she can also reach this air defense so look at that planning on this the understanding that this guy has on how to path this queen exactly what her reach is from standing right here to be able to reach this air defense man this guy is good and it shows in this very well planned attack right here um man Look at that wall break in right there. Very nice. Going to use king to, to cut in this side of the funnel over here. And another benefit of using that king is he can tank for those wall breakers. He can also tank for the queen. He's tanking this archer tower. Before that, he was also tanking this archer tower. So not only good for funneling, but he also does some good tanking, which can save you a rage for later on in the raid. Not that he really needs to save rage on this. He has four of, this on, four of them on this attack. Um, four rages, one jump man gonna wreck this base trickling in those baby dragons too alongside the queen look for another one to come down as this air defense goes down right here if there's air defense goes down baby dragon's gonna be able to get a ton of value right in here I'm just gonna use it to keep trimming this trash look at that stone slammer coming in direct targeting that very last air defense that's the one that his queen is not gonna be able to reach and that air defense is already down and wrecked gonna have to pop his queen right here pops her because she was really low and encountering that enemy uh, king right there trickling in those baby dragons trying to keep take advantage of their raged ability guys he's gonna swag he's gonna swag a bunch of baby dragons on this raid I think he's gonna swag a freeze too He's, look at this, this base is already gone. Last air targeting defense just went down. Actually, I guess the last one was right down here, but look at this. Look how many baby dragons he still has alive. He's still got three baby dragons not even dropped. He's still got a free spell not used, swagging so many. Oh my gosh. And all those baby dragons still up. He crushed this base ridiculously hard. Holy moly, what an attack to end on, you guys. So, hey, good war to Jesmec. They continue their undefeated streak. Um, once again, like I said, what are you going to do? Missing five-year Town Hall 12s? I mean, you know, no excuses, but hey, it is what it is, you know? It was a good war. Look forward to facing them again next time. And uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the recap, and I'll see you in the next video.